Previously, Sunraku wakes up in his bed after being defeated by Lycagon. His whole body is cursed with the Lycagon marks. Reading the details, he gets annoyed to learn that the curse will not allow him to attach any equipment to his body, especially in the areas where he has the marks. That part of his body won't be affected by magic either. Finally, to remove the curse, he needs the prayers of a saint or to defeat the monster that inflicted the curse upon him. He then comes out to the street and starts shouting with anger. Then, he reminds himself to remain cool-headed. All those trash games have taught him to stay calm, unbreakable, and patient in awful situations. A mysterious door appears, and a bunny disappears into it. Sunraku reads the message that it's an invitation from Ravatuza. Now, we are introduced to the Shangri-La Frontier game as a unique VR experience. It's different from the rest of the games due to its extraordinarily immersive gameplay. Not only that, but also a community of 30 million people plays this game around the world. For this reason, it has rightfully received the title of a god-tier game. Additionally, an avid trash game lover, Rekuro, is also playing this game. Rei enters the game shop and silently looks around. The shop owner knows that she is secretly searching for Rekuro there. She diverts her attention towards herself by telling Rei that if she is looking for Rekuro, then her efforts are futile. Because ever since she handed him over the SLF game at the beginning of the summer break, he has not visited the shop. Then she is surprised to learn that Rei is already a game player. So why did she not find Rekuro at the beginner's level? While the shop owner already shared that he plays the game by the name of Sunraku, Rei gets sad when she reveals that he skipped the beginner's tutorial. The shop owner laughs out loud after hearing this. That's what she expected from a fanatic game player like Rekuro. She also suggests that Rei can always tell him in person what she feels for him. But Rei is too shy to express her feelings. On the other hand, Rekuro's sister leaves the house after telling him. Meanwhile, he reads the gameplay in his room. The instructions say that there are various unique scenarios in the game. In each scenario, players can acquire different skills. Once a person gets their hands on Vorpal weapons at any stage, they may encounter a Vorpal bunny at any stage of the game. The rabbit keeps running in front of the player until they reach the door of their world, Rabbituza. The player then goes on a tour of Rabbituza, where they must defeat the unique Laganian Python. After winning, the player achieves the Enchant Vorpal spell. He remembers his conversation with the Vorpal Bunny's boss, Vaisesh. He appreciates how bravely he fought with the Lycagon. He believes that Senraku has a Vorpal soul, but he has no idea what that means. The boss looks mighty and smokes a cigarette while asking if Senraku accepts being in his training. If so, he must reveal it now. Senraku suddenly realizes that it's a great opportunity to learn skills from the unique personality of a boss like Vaisesh. Without wasting a moment, he gets on his knees and asks the boss if he can be his trainee. The boss gets up from his seat, and his steps thump on the floor. That really terrifies Sunraku, and he thinks that he probably chose the wrong response. But boss pats his back and laughs. He appreciates the way Sunraku speaks. In addition to that, he truly likes that he has talent and the will to learn. The boss asks him to refer to him by his nickname, Vash. Then he turns towards Emil and appoints her to be with Sunraku. Emil gets so happy and promises that she will work diligently. Then she immediately wants to take him to the palace. At first, Sunraku hesitates because he is tired. But then he thinks that he must wander around to know more about the monsters and look for unique scenarios. When he hears that Emil will take him to the inn, he agrees because he wants to register his respawn points. Suddenly, Boss remembers that he has not given Vorpal the collar. He throws it towards Sunraku, and it goes down and ties around his neck. Sunraku examines the information about the collar and gets excited to know that it is the Vorpal Soul Collar, so he would get 2.5 times his stat points. But knowing that it would reduce the EXP by half, he wanted to immediately take off the collar. But Boss stopped him from doing so. He believes that a weak person needs hard training to grow from weaker to stronger. That's the true essence of a Vorpal Soul. Sunraku shouts as he dislikes another restriction. The scene shifts back to Rekuro's room, where he calculates his stat points while simultaneously scrolling down Shangri-La's forum. Surprisingly, the forum discusses the unique scenario, but no one knows about Emil and Vaisesh, so it's impossible for anyone to know anything about the Vorpal Collar. Suddenly, Rekuro remembers that he has to play another trash game he likes, Berserk Online. It's a fighting game, and its popularity has reduced over time to the point that now only 100 players play per day. It's astonishing that this game even exists with such a small fan base. Rekuro enters this game with his game name, Sunraku. Another player, Katso, is waiting for him to fight. Before he gets closer to Sunraku, his limbs get bigger, and then in the next few moments, he has many legs and hands chasing Sunraku. Sunraku punches each of his limbs with the highest speed. His quick draw fist style always makes him win fights. The other players watch them fight and enjoy it. Suddenly, a glitch in the trash game breaks one of the limbs of Katso. But before it falls down, it punches so hard in Sunraku's face that he loses the game. 
After falling down, he admits that he has not been playing trash games. That's why he lost the round so easily. Katso knows that Sunraku is playing SLF these days. They sit aside, and he shares that SLF has seven colossi in the game. While he read in the forums that only four of them are known so far, all seven remain undefeated to date. Other Berserk online players gather around and appreciate how they played. But Sunraku keeps telling Katso that he came across only one of the seven colossi, and it beats him easily. The details sound interesting, and Katso shows an interest in the game. He shares that in the coming days, he can be a part of SLF too. Then Katso says that he sent an email to his BERP player fellows, saying that Sunraku is now a part of SLF. They were so happy. Besides, a fellow player, Arthur Pencilgan, kills many players in SLF and tells herself that she can't wait for Sunraku. It's surprising that a trash game lover is playing SLF, a god-tier game. She wants to guide him through the game's hardships. On the other hand, Sunraku gets out of Rabatuza through a teleport door. He enters Secondale. After playing the BERP game, he is feeling energetic. Emil wants to go back to show him the palace in Rabatuza, but Sunraku denies it. He wants to go to Thirdama before the crowd reaches there. Since the start of summer break, many new players have entered, and the game is pretty crowded now. Besides, Thirdama is a huge city, so there is a good chance that he will face many new unique seniors there. Emil does not understand what he says, but she shakes her head in obedience. Then he adds the Vorpal Bunny to the list with the name of Traveler Bunny Emu. It rides on Sunraku, and the other game players see him with huge amazement. Girls love the cute bunny and want to know where they can get it and why Sunraku's body has weird marks. Suddenly, Sunraku realizes that it was bad that others knew about this new bunny. While he wants to keep it a secret, he immediately puts his hands on Emil's face and runs out of the street. While the curious girls immediately take their picture and post it in the forums, Sunraku stops outside the city walls in the barren lands. Emil doesn't know that he can run with speed. Then Sunraku remembers that his curse includes the line that certain monsters get so terrified of the Lycagon marks on his body. Suddenly, a sheep-like animal runs towards them furiously. But seeing the fiery Lycagon marks, it turns around and runs away. It seems that it terrified the monster. Knowing that, Sunraku begins running after that monster and throws Vorpal choppers at it. That stops the monster, but as he gets closer, Sunraku attacks again with choppers. He knows that he is stronger in the games, but in the real world, he is not so strong. Watching him kill the monster, Emil appreciates Sunraku so much. That hunt gives him more courage. Now he immediately wants to fight the area boss because only after that will they reach Thirdama. They begin running towards the area boss. After covering some distance, they reach the muddy area, and Emil complains that her clothes are getting dirty. While on the way, Emil shares that the area boss here is called Mud Digger. Suddenly, the mud begins rising as if a monster is moving under the surface. It begins getting closer. Before it reaches them, Sunraku asks Emil to jump on his shoulder. Suddenly, a fish-like monster emerges from the mud. The game instructs them that the Mud Digger forces players to be in a walking state, while their feet will remain immersed in the mud. It's the area boss with party level 4. Now Sunraku thinks that it's his worst enemy so far. And that's the end of the fourth episode of Shangri-La Frontier. Please comment and let me know which anime recap you'd like to see next. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, goodbye.